Are you afraid of commitment? Oh, that's a good one. It's early in the year and I'm thinking about, okay, what is the plan for me for this week, this, this month, and this year? And all I could figure out is instead of making a list of goals to do, I think it's better to commit to specific ideas and where I want to go. Because if you think about it, too many of us have goals and many of us sometimes uh, this list of goals, the list of goals is not going anywhere. I would try and some friends are saying, it's not going to be possible. Sometimes you try a little bit, then you give up. But guess what? Once you commit, to an idea. Once you commit to a vision of where you want to go, it is much harder to have anyone stop you. Not only anyone to stop you, but also your own thoughts of stopping you in your drive to get, to get where you want to go. So let's see. Yesterday, I'm going to put here a link to the video I did on uh, dreaming more, dreaming bigger. The question is, once you have big dreams, you have to commit to reaching them. And the big question, and this is part of my learning journey, is how do we get from here and now to the dreams in the future? And that it deserves and requires commitment. So let's see. My name is Anne Faber, and you know what? For years, actually for more than 20 years, I've been a teacher. That's commitment. I've been a teacher since 1999. Imagine that is the previous century, the last millennium. That's a long time. And furthermore, I've been working on learning English and getting better as, as being a bilingual Canadian for more than 40 years. So, okay, so I know about commitment. How can I use my knowledge, my experiences about commitments to apply to other areas of my life because I have other goals. I'm sure that you have other goals. You have plans, you have dreams. Let's see if we can look at some strategies for us to have more commitment for where we want to go. I know that some of you will say, well, you cannot be committed 100% of the time. And I agree, I have not been 100% committed to everything in my life. But this year, I want to make things different. I want to come into a bigger vision so that I can bring forward into the world more about what I can share. I'm a teacher, been for a long time. Let's see if I can take my experiences and help you in your life and even help other teachers become even better teachers. So let's see how we can work this out. Well, my first strategy is to figure out what is one of your main strengths. One of my main strengths is learning. You know, I love learning. I've been enjoying learning ever since I can remember. And that is before the internet. I remember having my stamp collection where I would learn about the, the other countries, geography, politics through stamps. Well, it was not the biggest uh, way of learning. However, it was, a, it was opening doors for me to get to know other countries and other cultures. And you know what? Because I loved learning so much, I decided, or somehow life made it so that I got closer, I got surrounded by learners. I work in a high school for so many years, that means that I'm surrounded by learners. I've also found a community of learners, a community of amazing individuals with uh, um, Toastmasters, where I'm learning how to become a better speaker, with Movement Maker, where I'm uh, more, um, working with others on learning to create more than um, what we are because we can be so much more. And that is, for me, learning has been the key aspect. I don't know what is yours. We all have strengths. And once you have, you pinpoint your strength, it's so much easier to use it to get better. I remember Dean Graciosi talking about the fact that sometimes People are focusing on their weaknesses and trying to make things, their weaknesses smaller and build strength. I also know that there's some other people, uh, including Dean, that's saying, okay, instead of trying to work on your weaknesses, why don't you hire someone that uh, are good at uh, what you're not as good? And you know what? It will be amazing and rewarding for them. Because keep in mind that if you are 
we, you are energized with what you love to do. Someone else is energized with what they do. And often, it's not necessarily what you like to do. And that's how I realized that uh, that's how we can bre- uh, build teams. And it is a mindset that I'm working on this year because sometimes uh, you cannot do it all alone. And I know that together, uh, we're going to realize that uh, let's see if we can find people to help us so that we can all grow as individuals. Another project I've been committed to has been Apprenons en Français. So this is a website that I created on YouTube. Um, Actually, it's a channel on YouTube where I post videos on science, originally for my science students. But now it is uh, watched by people all around the world. And you know what? This is rewarding. When I started that, I started with uh, creating a few videos and show that to my class. And it was uh, on my hard drive and therefore people could see it within our class. And once I decided that it was okay to put it for the whole world to see, then it opened up my window, my, my view of how the world can be. And you know what? I had to improve my skills. And you know what? I have more than, I have almost 2,000 subs so far on my channel. And I'll put the link below so if you want to go and see. I also have hundreds of videos about science and it's in French. And this is putting together two other things that I love to do. One is about teaching and the other one, I realized that I enjoy making videos. And this is why I have a video right with you right now. And, and guess what? If you can figure out what you love to do, if you can figure out what are some of your strengths, try to see what you can do to apply some of your strengths. Well, YouTube channel will say it's not very, it's not a big thing. That's true. However, it put me outside of my comfort zone in a place where I had to, to learn new things. I had to realize that, okay, let's see if I can go beyond the classroom. And guess what? I'm not doing videos for millions of people. I'm making videos for the one person I can help on that day. And it makes the project not as as big. And you know what? Every comments I have from uh, viewers watching my videos saying, oh, thank you very much. You helped me for my test. You helped me understand what I was trying to figure out. That's always rewarding. And that's what we want to do. When, if you want to find the energy to be committed to a cause, to be committed to um, a project you want to do, you need to feel rewarded. Reward could be from a few people saying they're happy uh, or even for yourself saying, okay, I have some, um, I have places where I want to go and I have some timelines. There's a word, I was looking for the word. There's some timelines and let's see if I achieve what I want to do in those timelines. Why not celebrate? We don't celebrate enough. And you know what? That helps in keeping our commitment. The third aspect I'm gonna share about committing is the fact that I feel that reading has taught me so much and I believe that it can teach you so much as well. So, am I reading every day? I try. Is it bad that I don't read every day? No. All I know is that I have a vision that I have a book or two that are available for me. And when I think about it, I can read and learn something new. That's the same for you. Learn anything you feel is important for you. Could be about the uh, fiction, uh, it could be non-fiction, if you're interested about business, about cars, about science, read something that you like. You might learn something new and it is exciting because once you learn something new and you possibly meet somebody that have the same interest and it gets exciting. It gets exciting because you realize you're not by yourself and then you realize that your idea of committing to a pastime, to something that you enjoy, It's not just you. There are amazing people out there that have similar ideas than you. And you know what? Finding a a group is like finding a family where you can discuss about those ideas so that you can learn and be a much better person. And it's quite amazing. And I believe in that. We talked about commitment today. And you know what? Some people say, well, it's hard to commit. I do understand that. And I had a great question that Terry uh, Wade Thompson shared with me earlier, actually in 2022, and I reminded him last week. And the question is the following. And let's see if I can read it. The question is like this. 
what are you allowing in your life that is preventing you from doing or achieving what you really want to do? And it's, it's, it's an amazing question because we all have our ideas. We all have things we want to do, goals, some things we want to commit to. And the question is, why are we allowing people, allowing events, allowing ideas, preventing us to get where we want to do? Now, I'm not saying that some, some people, you may read something, you might have a mentor mentioning to you that you may want to redirect your, uh, your energy to get further. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that sometimes uh, it could be our thoughts. You have negative thoughts, you have uh, people around you saying it might not be possible, or your, the system around you is preventing you to do much more than you do daily. Because we're more than what we do daily. And that's, I hope, what we're going to work with in the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come. So there you go. I'm going to put here a link. Oh, there it is. A link to the first video I did yesterday about dreaming bigger and dreaming more. And now following with this video about commitment. And you know what? Together, we'll find a way to commit to our dreams and I believe in us. So let's see, I'll see you in the next video and have an amazing day.